I'm here as always with my good friend, Paul. Paul, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well, Tom. How are you, my friend? I'm good. Uh, you just informed me that you're turning 41 next week, mate. Happy birthday. Uh, I know we'll do a show um, on the day as well. Actually, no, of course we won't do it because I'm, I'm assuming you'll be spending good quality time with your family, friends and loved ones. <laughs> uh well it is a sunday so a i don't sunday. know if i you know we're going to be uh getting triple time if yeah triple show uh, podcast we do the podcast we're going to be get, <laughs> getting paid triple time by who should be us to do this. <laughs> exactly the forces that be <laughs> <laughs> the Mate, man. Uh, yeah the man exactly um as a very quick segue how was your father's day uh father's day was awesome it was really lovely got to spend some time with uh my parents and my my family my immediate family or the, the immediate family I grew up with in the morning mm. uh, which was lovely and we all got our, our children together um I'm actually just as a as a side um thing I'm, I'm actually recording an Instagram live as well right now for everybody who wants to um jump into hero for life you'll be able to check that out but um oh yeah got caught to get caught up with a whole bunch of um, my my family and their kids, because we have a growing well of uh, grandchildren that are uh, nice. coming up through the ranks. Yes, um, which was lovely. Got some amazing uh, bagels and pancakes, yeah. and did all the delicious things, and mm -hmm. then made homemade pizzas for uh, for nice. dinner with Nat's uh, family as well. So they came around to our place, which was awesome. So. Yeah. It was a, a massive Sunday of carbicide, which oh yes, delicious. death by carbicide. That's uh, that's such that's a good way to go. I think I love yeah. that. It really um, sparked all the wonderful, um, delicious uh, things that I could possibly have hoped for, and yes. and I got the most typical Father's Day gift you could possibly uh, imagine. Good undies, socks. A pair of slippers. A pair of, oh, very nice, very nice. But, but Natty also got me a uh, a, a really great um, gift, which is going to be like a uh, a Scandinavian a visit to a, a visit to a Scandinavian like bathhouse. So it's oh. like a hot sauna, and you get to kind of do um, you know cold dunks and all that kind of stuff, mm. which is, she knows, like I'm, I've been begging her for an actual sauna and a uh, a drop pool for for some time, but this is the next best thing. This is the next <laughs> best thing, yeah. Oh man, that's killer. Well, hey, uh, so guys, today we, uh, we we always try to pick a topic for, for the show. And um, as you guys know, Paulie and I love to kind of uh, deviate and, and walk on tangents and kind of see where the show goes, kind of like a song. You know, we always come back to the chorus. We like to see where the verses take us. And uh, today, the chorus of the show will be uh, morning routines. And we're going to explore, um, you know, the kind of morning routines that work for us, the different morning routines we've tried in the past, um, how to to optimize your morning as well to prepare you for the day um, mm. and, and, um, and all the little intricate ways that you can do that as well. But uh, Paulie, without further ado, my friend, should we... Um, why don't, why don't we speak about the benefits of the morning routine first before we go into the nitty gritty? Yeah, sure thing. So for me, uh, the benefits, uh, firstly, let me just start by saying my experience of a solid, strong morning routine is, is, is everything to set up for a powerful day. If I have a solid, um, empowering morning routine, firstly, I feel like uh, I, I'm just ready to take on the day. And also if I'm productive first thing in the morning, I don't feel the pressure and the load to, mm -hmm. um, to, to take on so much in the rest of the day. Um, it, it's so easy for you to become a slave to the outside world uh, from the moment you wake up if you're not conscious about it. And I remember interviewing somebody, I forget where it was, but the, the, the quote was, if you don't make your own mind up, someone else will make your mind up for you. Mm. And that starts the moment you wake up in the morning. Mm. So many of us are scrolling through social media the very first moment that we wake up in the morning. And the second you do that, you have no power over what goes into your head. So I suppose the first thing I, I would say is, is um, are you conscious of what you're not doing? 
first thing in the morning as opposed to what you are because the general standard is you wake up and you start scrolling throughout social media which means you have no power of what's going into your head yes mate they're they're strong words and i i love that because it it's true i think um sometimes the wake up call i think i'm not sure perhaps perhaps we can um, talk a bit about this but i think sometimes people tend to um view a morning routine as something synonymous only or exclusively with waking up early but it's, mm. it doesn't have to be about the time of day necessarily but it's more about what you're doing in the moments in the kind of like the first 90 minutes you know the time you wake up um because it does set you up for for the day and um you know i was listening to the um mark zuckerberg went on joe rogan recently and um he was talking about how busy his life is mm. and he was saying that uh you know you don't even have to be the founder of facebook that to 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 have a life a reactionary life where your entire life is just putting out spot fires mm. you know and there's no shortage of things to to fix in this day and age mm -hmm. but for fulfillment to ensue you know and for happiness um, to be there and progress to be there. You've got to feel like you're moving the, the needle along in your own life. You're building mm -hmm. something, you're working towards something, you're advancing, you're, you're gradually getting better at something. And unfortunately you have to be reactionary in, in life, you know? Um, but if you just do that all day, every day, you'll start to feel, you know, what, what, what we hear all the time stuck. I don't know who I am anymore. I'm mm -hmm. just burnt out. You know, these are just, these are kind of big, broad, uh, phrases and, and expressions that to me kind of sum up that feeling that life isn't changing and I'm just groundhogging, you know, my entire existence. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's why, you know, so many people will say the first thing that they do when they get, when they wake up in the morning is, is they jump on their emails and they, uh, th th they figure out what, what they can fix. Yes. And if you, you know, if you start to kind of create your mindset, and frame in and around how can I put out fires, then where do you think you're going to learn to, to continue to cultivate that mindset? You're going to continue having that, uh, th that mindset of putting out fires. Mm. What if you were to create a different reality for yourself first thing in the morning and uh, yourself and I, I know, I know Tom, you've been uh, doing a lot of work uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about, the, the little routine that you've crafted that you've settled on that has really, really given you the best opportunity to set yourself up for the rest of the day. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, so, so for me, the morning routine starts the night before because I, I, if I don't feel, if I'm really buggered, you know, and sloppy because I ate really late and so I just don't get a good morning routine in and I find up, a, I fall back to sleep, you yep. know, so I, I typically, I have kind of a three, two, one thing. I'll, my last meal will be kind of three hours before I um, go to sleep. Uh, this hasn't been happening as much, um, but you know, we can, <laughs> we can dream. Technology, you know, turning the electricity and the social media off um, two hours before, although yes. it's, it's kind of not been happening recently. And then one hour before it's just Siobhan and I are, you know, are talking or we're talking about ideas and so forth, but we like to kind of cuddle our dogs and stuff. and hang out on the couch but the, the main thing for me there is fasting three hours before sleep mm -hmm. i just feel so awake and yeah. um my my mind is so clear um off a fast it's just wonderful it's just you're just so clear-headed um so you kind of wake up quite alert you know it takes yeah. you a bit of time to get up but it, it, it's pretty good so if i if i I mean, so for yesterday, my, my final meal was at about 4.30 and then I fell asleep at about 9.30, 10. Mm -hmm. um, um, and that's just, that's just something that I've kind of practiced a bit. So then I'm up um, just before five and I'll, I'll let the dogs out and they'll go for a pee and so forth. And then when they come back in, um, by around five to 5.15, I'm getting into my first task of the day, which is either usually movement or journaling. And um, it's changed a lot since I um, started doing this. Um, but, uh, you know, movement is to stay awake. Um, so I don't have to jump on 10 coffees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then journaling is just, my mind is kind of often filled with ideas, usually influenced by dreams from the night before and so forth that I just like to write down. 
and it mm -hmm. gets me into my pattern of writing. And then I'll either decide to do um, either reading or writing or a combination of the two thereafter. So today has been four hours of reading because <laughs> I have a bit of a slow day today. Um, finished a book, which ironically enough was the 5am club um, and uh, started a new book. But uh, most of the time it's just to, to know for sure that every single day I'm going to get the things in that matter the most to me, which is reading and writing, you know, um, I work from home. So I know I'm going to get, uh, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with my partner. And that's obviously a, a really important way to fill my cup up. Um, but if I'm not reading and writing consistently, I start to feel uh, drained of life and like my soul is in need of, of that replenishment. So it's a it's a selfish thing but it makes me feel abundant like i can give back throughout the rest of the day yeah love that and and the the thing that the main thing that i glean from that is is identifying what gives you the fuel to be you mm. you know that reading and writing uh gives you that fuel to continue uh to, to to thrive throughout the day you know that's that's a wonderful thing and it may be something completely different for somebody else but but really knowing and acknowledging what, what, what gives you the true sense of who you are gives you the ability to be able to, uh, to, to move through and move forward. So I love that. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, and that's a great point as well. And I think um, often, oftentimes the, the trouble that you can fall into, and I've certainly been, this, um, been here in the past, when you're kind of developing an evening routine or a morning routine is to um, become very attached and rigid you know, with, with the things mm -hmm. that you do, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing my reading right now. I have to get 50 pages in and I have to get my 45 minute workout in or else A, B and C. Yeah. And um, what I would suggest is flow with it and, and let the morning routine manifest itself in front of you. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, you've just provided this space yeah. um, for, for that purpose to come through. You know, one of the great ideas, um, that um, David Data writes about when he's talking about um, how to how to find your purpose. He's, it's, he's like, it's actually very simple. If I if I locked you in a room for three days with nothing but a chair in there, and all of your pains and traumas and conditioning and worries and stresses and angst came up, after that, by the time it's kind of day two, tell me what that thing that you can't wait to do as soon as you get out of that room would be. And he's like, that's your purpose. And, mm. and it, what it speaks to is your the, the pursuit of trying to find a life's purpose is is pointless because mm. it changes all the time. So a purpose isn't something that you find. It's it's more or less something that you find out as you give yourself the space and time to let it come to you. Mm. So for me, a morning routine is very much like that. For for, for some you know, last night I wanted, I was going to write, you know, thousand words. Let's go for it. And this morning, um, I just couldn't put my books down and I was like, oh, okay, well, I clearly have to roll with this. Something beyond me is, uh, yeah. is, is, is dangling the strings and moving me in certain ways. So I've, I've got to do it. Yeah. I love that. And it's giving yourself almost, uh, a, 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 not like a direct prescriptive, um, you know, minute to minute, but a framework mm. to be able to work within and then let it, allowing yourself to go with it, which sounds, yep. which sounds great, mate. Really, really, really great. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's a, it's a really good point, mate. I think if you, if you, if you give, I think there are parameters for uh, freedom and creativity and so forth, but there should be so much unbounded uh, freedom and, and limitless passion within those boundaries you know from from seven till eight i'm going to give myself me time but mm. whatever that is i might jump right back into pottery gardening yeah. you know i might do whatever the fuck that i want to do yeah. um because it's just my time it's not i have to do this and i have to do this and i have to do this so yeah. it's um yeah yeah no i agree and you know to to, to touch on my kind mm. of uh morning routines Often there is uh, an element of exercise and movement in it, not a, a, an intensive uh, bout of exercise. Uh, I suppose resistance training comes in later on in the morning and I, I tend to always do that in the morning because that's when I feel um, the most productive in a, in, in a physical sense. But 
Um, I, I'm definitely not, you know, like as far as science is concerned, I don't, uh, fr from what I understand, like your hormonal peak um, comes later on in the afternoon. I'm not that interested in that. I'm interested yeah. in what I'm going to get the most out of when it comes to my, uh, you know, uh, my mental and physical health or my mental health first and foremost. Um, I, I always go for a, a walk as close as I can to sunrise. Mm. And uh, I, I'm usually listening to something that feeds my soul uh, in terms of, uh, and, and sometimes it could just be feeding my mind as well. Mm. Something that's inspiring first mm. thing. And we have the ability to be able to do all this, you know, once upon a time, uh, first thing in the morning, we were at the behest of, you know, three major media outlets and it was what was on TV or the radio at that particular time. And we had no other choice, you know, uh, and now we, we actually get to choose what, what the input is. Mm. And that input can be, which leads me to my next uh, point is um, self-directed. And that can be, you know, are we going to choose to to be able to be uh, to exercise what we're grateful for? Are we going to choose to um, journal about uh, our dreams from the night before? Are we going to choose to flesh out our subconscious? Um, all of these types of things, we have the power to be able to exercise and we don't yeah. need to be, um, you know, on the pointy end of uh, someone or something else's algorithm. Mm. We can create our, uh, our own algorithm. Mate, that is such a great point. I think um, it, it, it's uh, perhaps perhaps a bit of a scary point for people um, initially because when life is abundant and as liberating as it is in this day and age, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it creates that responsibility, you know, and I think um, for, for a lot of our lives, as you said before, even not even 50 years ago, there were only three stations to choose from to where you get your information and news from. Prior to that, um, religion, you know, dominating cultures and, th you know, which, which is essentially for better or for worse, here's a belief system for you to, to, to live your life and, and, and be guided by. And now a lot of that is kind of being disregarded, which is great because it gives us our own ways to kind of cultivate that for ourselves but it's also very scary because it's like well now it's now i'm alone in this universe but you know what i would say in the very beginning you know akin to 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 kind of what you're saying is i, I might i may not know if this is the first time you've ever even heard about a morning routine or about you know optimization in the morning and so forth and you don't even know where to begin begin with something that just makes you feel good and then start to develop a kind of awareness of comparison of things that are beginning to make you feel better and then better and beyond that and then beyond that. And it's going to take you down wonderful paths of listening to podcasts, um, <clears throat> audio books, maybe silence, you know? Um, but uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of been our journey as well. Hey. Absolutely. And, and I think it's great to be able to tap into what intrinsically makes you feel, um, you know, good about yourself, good about your own reality. Mm. And it's also good to couple it sometimes with science to be able to guide you as to what's going to spark productive thoughts and uh, behaviours in my mind. What What is going to get make me most primed to... Um, be focused for the next 90 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. having a cold shower in the morning or an ice bath, if you have it available to you, these, these are things that put the right amount of stress under your, your mind and your body to be able to create that, um, that ability to, uh, to, to elevate the right hormones and and chemicals in your body so you can then actually release and, and and create the behaviors that we're talking about so paulie do you want to take us through um do you kind of have a morning routine that you work off right now or have you just kind of ingrained things that you try to get in most of the time or how, how does it look for you so for me uh, i suppose i have a framework like i was talking about before of things that i like to get in um, cold exposure is one of them. I, I, the, the more research I'm, I'm doing is is uh, is understanding that putting your body under a certain level of stress. And there's a, a great study that came out in the last couple of years. Her name her name's Wendy Suzuki, I think, um, and she talks about 
um, how there was a control study and then there were different participants who were actually um, exposed to different level, like, like a, a very, very clear stressful situation. As a result of that, they were actually able to, after that, be so much more focused on a task at hand um, than not. And and this, I think the, the the way they were placed under stress was um, being put under like a like job interview ish or job evaluation style circumstances. Now that's like a mental stress, uh, but the same chemical. Um, production can be achieved by doing it um, through through cold exposure you yes. know you're, yes. you're still elevating um, you know th these levels of uh, chemicals and hormones in your body so you can actually create that focus so I'll always have um, access to um, to that always having access to uh, natural sunlight as well um, I like to if I if I if I can and it's not always possible I always need to be uh, able to see my children, Love it. Um, possibly, uh, you know, be part of getting them ready to uh, for school or walking them to school. Um, if I can, I'll nip home and and, and see them uh, and give them a, a cuddle um, in between meetings. Um, and uh, I fast in the morning. So uh, I try my best to, when I wake up, I'll have about seven, 800 mils of water. Uh, and then I'll wait the longest I possibly can to have my first coffee. Uh, now, in that period of time, I will go through a period of doing some some journaling and intro introspective focus. And that generally is just about kind of reframing my mind about what I am grateful for. Um, and that just gives me a really, really wonderful exercise. And like I said, a frame for me to be able to take on the rest of my day in that kind of glass half full um, perspective. And it works for me. I really, really love it. Uh, it gives me uh, a wonderfully productive uh, take on the rest of the day. And I, I feel the difference between that. Mm. Um, seeing if I've missed out on anything. Mm. Uh, like I said, I, I do a more formal uh, structured form of training as well later on in the morning. Uh, and I try to get, say, like a, at least a 90 minute block of productive work done in the morning as well. Yep. Beautiful, mate. Well, you know, I think, um, I think it's also important, as you said before, to, to speak about what the science, um, says is best. You know, I mean, you and I are both, you know, giant fans of, uh, Dr. Huberman, mm. who's a neuroscientist at Stanford, um, and uh, he kind of speaks a lot about this, you know, just with sun exposure in the morning and movement, um, you know, delaying the consumption of coffee um, about 90 minutes or so after waking, which is something that I do not do, by the way. <laughs> I'm like fucking coffee straight away. Oh, no, it's, it's bloody hard. Oh, it's so bloody hard, hard. man. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I could go a very long time without eating. It's, you know, it's not a major thing for me. I love to eat, but I, I'm happy to push that back. But just that, that buzz of getting that caffeine, you know, and sitting down to read before, before the birds start chirping, when you can see the, oh, it's just the best. It's just the absolute best. It is amazing. And let's just shine a light just for a moment on what, like, why do you find that moment before the birds are chirping? Why do you find it such a special time in the morning? Oh, I mean, it's just so silent. That's really what it is. You know, yeah. I think when I'm up, everyone else is asleep you know the sun's still asleep and um it's just a time where i feel so free and available to mm. what the world can can offer me whether that's in a book you know a, a lot of the times not not um um not not with the past kind of three or four books i've read but um most of the time i'm reading um people who have long since passed mm. and you know it it kind of um it, it brings in a lot of awe. So I'll often, I'll often go out and I'll, you know, be looking up at the stars before just to take a moment to remind myself of how vast this place is, you know? Mm. And um, when I'm, when I'm that clear headed and, and, and calm and I start reading from someone who, you know, died a hundred years ago, all the way down to, you know, stoist books, you know, a thousand plus years ago. Mm. Um, it just reminds me of what's really important in life. Um, mm which is uh, 
something that I forget every day, you know, yeah. as soon as the day wakes up and, you know, and then it's like, well, I'm stressed about all different sorts of things and I, I forget, you know, cause I'm a human being. Um, but if I, if I don't have that moment, um, in the morning where it's just for me, it's, uh, I, I feel it dude. Yeah. I think that's a great point. Uh, you know, having a morning routine uh, sometimes is a wonderful way to remind yourself of, of the things that are important. And you're, you, I feel like our minds are, are very susceptible first thing in the morning. Mm. So if mm. we can be purposeful about how we feed our minds and our brains first thing in the morning, like I said before, that primes our brains for the day to come. And if you do that enough times, bit by bit, then slowly but surely as you wake up and you continue to wake up, there will be an expectation um, within your mind to be able to look at the world in a certain light. Mm, yeah, it, I mean, and it's different for everyone, isn't it? You know, like our routines are different and it depends on your li lifestyle and what you enjoy and what you want to do, you know. And um, Robin Sharma in the 5am club speaks about the 2020 rule and he mm -hmm. says 20 minutes of movement. So if you're up at kind of quarter to five, by five, you can hit the routine, which is 20 minutes of movement, 20 yeah. minutes of reflection and 20 minutes of growth. And it mm -hmm. gives you different ideas. It could be yoga and training or whatever you can do to breathe hard and sweat in the first 20 minutes, meditation or journaling, you know, which is obviously, you know, you and I, that's a big thing for us. And then reading and writing, whatever it is. Yeah. For me, the, probably one of the reasons why I preferred CrossFit over F45 is because I like long, hard workouts. And I like that in my morning routine. I prefer to read for two hours and then write for two hours. I can't do the quick change up, but you might be someone who's completely different and you might like to get pitter patter and all these different things in. So you feel abundant by the time you sit down for that first meeting in the morning. But you know, like, like Paulie was saying, a, a morning routine is a framework, but you've got all sorts of wonderful things that you can do to, to, to make it your own personal morning routine definitely and uh, and i think whatever you're trying to achieve out of it very very rarely in the morning are you trying to achieve like uh you know a a, a winding down process because you've just woken up you're probably looking to be um a little bit more focused and productive uh, for the day which can lead us probably for another conversation to an evening routine sure, and, sure. And, and how we can go about kind of being purposeful about that. But ultimately, I think it comes back down to really, really just acknowledging the um, the foundational principle behind what a morning routine is. And it's understanding that we have the power within ourselves to be able to um, direct our mindset and our bodies to whatever we choose for it to do. We don't have to be a slave to whatever is out there. Yeah. We can always bring it back in. We can always be really, really considered about, hey, where do I actually want my energy to be um, directed for the next hour, two hours of my day? Mate, that, I mean, that's a great way to finish. That's awesome. You know, I, I think it's, I think it's motivating. And I think, um, yeah, you know, we're not, uh, I use this analogy all the time and I apologize if I, you know, I sound like a broken record, but when, when concepts are new to you or, or when you're starting something new, I, you know, and I, I kind of base this off how I feel, you know, um, I'm not like a kind of cold Turkey person or, you know, it kind of takes me a long time to get into things, mm -hmm. but, uh, using the analogy of, you know, not seeing yourself as trying to climb to the top of Mount Everest just yet, you know, but just trying to get to base camp, you know, a morning routine for you might be waking up half an hour earlier um, mm -hmm. or even at the same time, but just with a bit more intention, you know, yep. just taking, taking the first 10 minutes to just wake up intentionally as opposed to going on your phone and then you go on your phone and then, and see it, see where it takes you, you know, start to explore different ways of living because you obviously start to explore different identities of who you can be definitely tiny habits um yes. is definitely the way to go it makes it achievable and sustainable in the long term mm -hmm. and just understanding that like you said before you can wake up at the same time but understanding that there is an intention behind 
what you're doing with your wake up. Um, generally speaking, we have places to be first thing in the morning. Um, but if you create intention behind your your morning, you might realize that you've identified gaps in your morning. And if you're a little bit more kind of, there's a framework behind it, then all of a sudden you can actually identify gaps that you can then give to yourself with. And I've noticed this a lot with the dads uh, and, and the mums that I, I work with. Um, we'll sit down and we'll go through their mornings. And, um, you know, at one point, uh, you know, we'll be breaking it down. And then uh, at a point, we'll just kind of identify and acknowledge, hey, there's a there's actually an eight minute gap there for you to be able to give to yourself mm -hmm. in amongst all of this chaos in between getting the kids ready for school, this, that and the other, um, uh, you know, going uh, and then heading off to work yourself. What if you were just to step outside embrace the sunshine and do some deep breathing. I don't know, for two minutes, mm. 90 seconds. What can that do? Well, it can change your entire physiology yes. for starters and then give you a, a platform to be able to take and sip in the rest of the day in a much more empowered way. Yeah, yeah, dude. We're, we're, I mean, especially in this day and age, we're just in the forest all the time. And we, we, we forget that, A, we're in a forest and B, that we can take ourselves out to see the forest that we're in and then decide which forest that we want to be in. And those little pattern interrupts are just everything. You know, I mean, A, they can change your physiology, but they can take, they can change your entire life's course. If you just yeah. take yourself out and just go, am I majoring in the minors right now? Is this really relevant? You know, mm. everything. So that's but, um, good. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you, Tommy. Thanks very much for the chat. Always, always. And uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Instagram Live. <laughs> First and last name. <laughs> um, yeah, appreciate it. And looking forward to having another chat with you next time. Next time. All right, dude. Talk to you soon. Bye.